So we're going to have two examples of this concern with republicanism, this concern with preserving virtue in the new society uh, from a couple of unexpected directions. And we're going to start out with Noah Webster. Noah Webster is famous for his dictionary. Um, and Webster lived during the revolutionary period and the period of the early republic. And he viewed his dictionary project as part of uh, the creation of the American Republic. Here's the dictionary. He spent 21 years writing it. In 1793, he'd come out with a spelling book. Um, and both the speller and the dictionary he saw as a patriotic uh, work. And uh, this is what he said about it. He wrote this in 1789, just as the Constitution had been ratified. America is in a situation the most favorable for great reformations, and the present time is, to a singular degree, auspicious. The minds of men in this country have been awakened. New scenes have been for many years presenting new occasions for exertion. Unexpected distresses have called forth the power of invention, and the application of new expedients has demanded every possible of exercise of wisdom and talents. Attention is roused, the mind expanded, and the intellectual faculties invigorated. Here, men are prepared to receive improvements which would be rejected by nations whose habits have not been shaken by similar events. The revolution has made us awaken. Now is the time, and this the country, in which we may expect success in attempting changes favorable to language, science, and government. So the dictionary is part of this project of creating a better, a newer uh, republic. And uh, how does it do that? It does that by two ways. It makes everybody talk and spell the same. And that means that you can't distinguish people through rank, through social rank, that is, like the English do. And it also ties the country together, north and south and east and west, and creates one nation. And he's very concerned with creating nationality. It's his life work. And now you know why this is called the American Dictionary of the English Language, because it's specifically for Americans. Now, here's the other example, a play, a play written by a Vermonter. There he is, Royal Tyler. Royal Tyler uh, lived in Vermont. He was on the Vermont Supreme Court. He taught at UVM. But he's best known for uh, the play he wrote. UVM Theater is named after him. It's the first American play, and it's called The Contrast. And here's the front piece from it, the illustration. What is the contrast? The contrast is between the character in the middle. His name was Jonathan. He's a simple country American. Um, and the contrast is between him and the New Yorkers he runs into when he comes to the city. And these New Yorkers want to pretend that they're British aristocrats. They're consumed with fashion. Everything they do is based on British style and British customs and uh, what's going on in London. Um, and uh, Tyler's arguing that they're betraying the revolution. Now, the contrast is a comedy. Jonathan is a simple character who has the habit of, you know, bursting out with whatever's on his mind, and everything he says is um, uh, uh, funny, but it's also a challenge to this notion that we have to behave like the British. The theme of the play is that if we were more like Jonathan, simple, virtuous, plain, hardworking, um, we'd be better off as a country, and then this is what we have to aim for as a republic. So both things as unexpected as dictionaries and plays teach this lesson of uh, republican virtue in the new nation.